Good morning, all. Good afternoon. Sorry, it's been delayed. I was on the phone with another client. Okay, we are here. All right. I don't think there's going to be a ton of participation because they closed out the link on our 1KWS page. Everyone thinks that we're not having it today, but hey, Saras, uh, what will be will be. Miss Laura, what you working on? What can we help you with? I love that you sent me over your 411. Thank you. I know how uncomfortable that is, but look what happened last year. Right. Um, nothing. I just got to get a Benzer sign. They don't like doing digital signatures, so it's kind of a pain, but they're only like, they're like less than a mile away. So I don't mind running over there to get Benzer signed. And um, I saw this on, an, on a pot buy. Maybe it was a pot buy group, but they talked about um, printing out all the Alta statements from last year and sending it to the to their clients, because you know how you have your you, you need all your tech stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just a, like another way to touch them and be like, hey, thanks again. Here's a couple of my cards. Ask for the referral and then um, a testimony too, if I haven't already. Yeah, it's smart. I love testimonies, but anything you can do to get them to give you one, ideal. Right. So, so and that, and then um, obviously to keep planning it back and like, we'll do referrals for anyone in the country, so. Yeah, I think it's the one thing we miss out is the opportunities for people outside of Arizona. Right. So, hi, Miss Renee, how's your weekend? This week has been insane. Yeah, it's only Monday. <laughs> well, you were down what? here in the woods, weren't you? Down here in Green Valley? Yeah. Don't even get me started. Three times. Now they're looking at Sierra Vista. So, yeah. Fun okay. times. What deals do you guys have in the hoppers that you need help with? Or do you need to double check on things to make sure that we've got all of our ducks in a row? Do we have any PC people in Sierra Vista or not? Charity. Charity works. She lives in Tucson but works out of Sierra Vista. Oh, okay. she does? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you would never know she lives in Tucson, but she she works lives in Tucson, works out here. Okay. So well, I have one of Josh Berkeley's um, agents doing a video showing for that down there. But if we end up going under contract, I figured I'd reach out to see if any PC people want to sit through inspections and stuff. Yeah, uh, yes. that way. I know she could use some help, but she lives in Vail sometimes too. Who? Cass Price. Just she doesn't have super though, does she? Here, this that she has. It, yeah, she has the armless axis, I believe. She has super armless. I might, but I didn't think that she even had super for armless. Well, we'll all communicate it out there. I'm sure we'll find somebody to help you out. That's the whole point. Yeah. Well, like I said, we have one of Josh's agents doing it right now, but oh, we just I spent so much time with these guys that we don't want to refer it out. So. And Nicole's got the first listing appointment. Huh? Don't you, Nicole? We lost Nicole. All right, go ahead, Laura. Oh, uh, why did they choose Sierra Vista over Green Valley? Because we tried Green Valley and they got beat out on one house. On the second house, they pulled their offer. Don't ask me. Oh, okay. Um, that, Basically because they had two two things not go their way in Green Valley. So huh. but now they're not in town anymore. So they're relying on video chats of Sierra Vista. So yeah. That's a big so difference. I read some today that people are experiencing going upwards of 35 different properties we're submitting offers in on before they get something to land for a, a, an FHA, FVA, or an FHA down payment assistance program house, which nests the seller the same, but there's a stigma that's been put out there right now that FHA loans and VA loans and all that stuff are too risky for people to take because there's way too many cash deals out there. So we need to do a way better job of connecting with listing agents and see if we can't give your buyers a, a somewhat of a running chance. Sad, sad truth that there's so many people out there that are literally just paying cash for crap houses in the market. But I mean, how do you do that though? That's the thing is, you know, you can get 
build a good rapport with the listing agent and you can offer over and you can put an escalation clause, you can send a love letter. There's, you know. Pay for the seller's costs because your escalation is only going to do so much. You're going to go over and above when it comes to your sales price and then you're going to risk getting appraisal out of it if you're offering, if they have the money to reserve, there's most down payment assistance programs, there's gonna be some money reserve over. So they can't utilize the entire down payment assistance, but find out from your lender how much you can and, and offer to pay $2,500 towards the seller's closing costs because that doesn't inflate the sales price. So it doesn't put us in a, a challenge for the, the appraisal, but it gives your buyers a way better advantage over the next best offer. So so saying that you don't want any seller's concessions, but you're going to pay for their. Oh, okay. I hadn't heard that one. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, if you look at a settlement statement, how much does the seller pay? Roughly one and a half percent. Mm-hmm. You got your Alta, your title, all of these things are involved. Right. So it's a couple thousand dollars, but if you're paying, you know, if you're getting 4% from down payment assistance or 5% for down payment assistance, and a three and a half percent down loan, they have a little bit of money to cover some of the closing costs that might be advantageous. Okay. I still prefer buy, I still prefer sellers though. hundred <laughs> percent. Except for the truck, then, truck right now, which has been a complete nightmare. Also, it can be helpful if the lender will actually speak to the listing agent. I know Roman from Fairway, he's offered to do that for me to hmm. tell them how solid the buyer is and the loan's good and that they don't have to worry. Some listing agents will reach out to all the lenders too, just right off the bat. Right. Especially if you have multiple offers that are all different dependencies. You want to get, take the strongest prequal you have and run with it because you want to make sure that there's no loan contingency to fight with on the deal. So that's why it's always advised to do that, that backend research. And it's simply just picking up the phone and say, hey, tell me about this deal. Tell me about these clients. Oh, they've been difficult to get a hold of. We can't get their documents, all this nonsense over and over and over again. Then all of a sudden you've got the, uh, you got the makings of a rough deal because if they're not communicating with the lender, they're not going to be easy to deal with on a, on a transaction. So welcome back to Tucson, Ms. Robin. Thank you. Soaking in some sunshine. For sure. Hey, Miss Melissa. Hey, Tess. How are you guys doing? So, all right. That was kind of the, the course correction for today. Was finding out what you guys needed and working on some stuff. We're going to be building on the conversation we had last week of the social media stories. How are they been working out for you? Those have been using them. I made it's headway in designing some. Nice. But I haven't got them posted or anything yet because I don't have the the KW thing on it. Yeah, the logos, if you need them, are on our website, onekwsa.com. You can click on resources. They're in there. It's not the problem with getting the logos. I have them. I just don't know what to do with them. So <laughs> I'll just put them on there kind of thing? Yeah. Um, gotcha. I just don't know how that works. So I'm working on it. Yeah, when you're putting a logo on something, you just need to have a logo on it. If it's an advertisement with your name and stuff on it, then the logo needs to be the same size as your name. It's the part about putting my name on there with the logo. I don't know how to do that. I I don't understand all that stuff. So so let's pull up some examples. Or we'll just do some examples. And I don't want to go into command. I'm not going to do it in command because okay. I, that's just confusing to me. So, and the, do Canva. Yeah, Renee. Yeah, about that's where about. I'm designing them right now. And I've got everything. I've got all my images in there. I've got my, I've got the uh, logos in my image folder. I have basically everything there. I just don't know how to get my name on there. So in Canva, you can just click cre create a design. You can type up here for a Facebook. Yeah, I already have that set Post. up, started. It's just a square. And they have a ton of templates and stuff mm -hmm. that you can like just utilize and steal. Um, I like restaurant things because for some reason, food always seems to be, you know,
Everyone likes food. I'm a foodie. If you just need to add text, you can just press T and a text box will pop up. Test. I know how to do that. It's putting my name in the KW kind of thing. I I don't know. I don't know. Am, I, am I just There's doing no... a text box over the top of the logo? Oh, yeah. yeah. You just do a text. Yeah, it doesn't even have to be right by the logo. You can do it wherever. See where my uploads are in here? I thought it had to be in a certain configuration to comply with the. No, as long as, as long as it's like the same size. Like you, you can't have your name in big letters and then KWSA like this, like tiny. Otherwise it doesn't matter. Okay, so it's just putting my name in a text box somewhere in. It's in adjacent to the the logo and the logo is there's like certain ones that are certain colors that aren't allowed or something you can you can download all the logos so well i have them all downloaded but so you can use whichever one you want those are kwsa approved logos i change mine depending on like what i have in the background and stuff yeah yeah that's that was another one of the questions i was having is like well that one doesn't look good on like that no. but you I don't have to as long as, as long as it's the awsa logo you're fine okay because i know okay. i know at some point we were told i don't like the the um the name tag that i got that was the one that came when I signed on. They changed the logo like right after that and it has the straight line between the KW and the name. And they said we that that's technically not a legitimate name tag anymore. As long as you use one of the KWSA logos that's in, on the site, I mean, those are all approved logos. Okay. Just make sure you have KWSA and not just KW. Yeah. yeah. You noticed how simple that was? My name's not even on this. Yeah. You don't even have to put your name on it. But. Well, th see, that's the other thing that I was confused about is like, I understood that every single time we posted anything in Facebook or Instagram or social media, whatever, that it had to have our name and Keller Williams, Southern Arizona on it. The logo. Post can be that way. Like yeah, I, got, I don't think if you're, I think anything real estate related now, if you're just if making a post like happy Martin Luther King Day, like I don't think you have to have your name and stuff on there. Nope, you do not. Yeah. So it's talking about posting relative to properties. Mm hmm any advertisement properties yeah. interest rates payments that's okay that makes it a little bit i mean that clarifies but that's not what i read when i read it it basically said everything what is that racing I mean, there's all there's literally all kinds of stuff you can do to your ads. Yeah, I I have the stuff done. I just did not know how to get that my name and the thing on there. Okay. Yeah, just add a text box. You can press for anybody that does use Canva, kind of some shortcuts that are easy. If you press T, a text box will come up. If you press R, a rectangle box will come up. If you press L, a line will come up. I did not know these things. Yeah, that's, that's I just similar to AutoCAD. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, I did make headway. I'm just saying, I did make headway, but not as fast well, as you guys. Was, so. I love Canva because it could do all this stuff. Like it automatically does the the balance. Yeah. Although I will have to say at some point, I'm going to have to 
have money in my budget to to do the pro because the the limit on images that was available was all the ones yeah, I want I mean, are pro. <laughs> all the yeah. ones I want. I pay for pro, but that's just my personal choice. Um, I personally like how with pro, how you can have a brand kit and it saves all of your colors and logos. Oh, absolutely. That's I would love product. to have it, but it, like I yeah. said, budget yet. It's like, yeah. I got, I have 62 nice. cents in my bank account. 62 <laughs> cents. So I'm still, I'm still flush. <laughs> um, Tess, do you have super access for armless or not? Nope. There's there's two reasons. One, first and foremost, is I haven't been able to afford super period yet. And number two, a lot of armless properties are outside um, e key. Like like you can get out into well, the I rural the areas and you can't get access. <laughs> So, the three that my buyers were looking at are all armless Supra, so never mind. That's all I was yeah, wondering. Yeah, so. yeah. If if you almost everybody that I know that has armless that uses Supra out in the rural rural areas, they use the hard key because their phone won't. Oh no, these aren't rural. These are like in the town. So. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Nope, I don't. Good luck. As you guys are talking, I'm just throwing some stuff together, like simple ads like this. You think they're stupid, but they do get attention. Because to, I'm not going to teach you a whole marketing and advertising class yet. Uh, the quickest way to do it is an advertisement needs to tell you the story of what the message is in the image without having to read anything about the, the copy. Right now, you could see quickly what this would be, right? At an instant, you'd be like, oh, okay. And then in the copy is when you go, would you like to learn more? But you can put the logo here. You can do this logo. Put it at the bottom corner. I like to line things up. If you had your own logo, You just want to make it look good. Why is there a bear and mountains in your logo? Because I like bears and mountains. Okay. I thought it because you were big like a teddy bear. <laughs> it makes that's no the, sense. That's just... the first thing that came to my mind. Because <laughs> I was playing around because I used to live on Twin Peaks Road. And when I created it, I don't use it as you guys can tell. How I long don't. have you been in um, Tucson, Big Dan? 20 years. Oh. How long has your parents been here? 20 years. Okay, so they moved here from somewhere else? Yeah, we moved here in 99. Oh, okay. I moved away for a couple years. I've there used to be years. there used to be a lounge. I'm sure it's been gone for 30 years or more. It was called Twin Peaks Lounge up on I think it was in on first or something going up into the mountains. But it was called Twin Peaks Lounge. Anyway, my uncle and my my two uncles and my grandfather and my dad were owners of that. Decades ago. That's awesome. So I would love to see some of you guys' ads that you make. And I don't want you to overthink them. There's no reason to be so hypercritical of it all. Especially with Canva, because it gives you design factors that you can literally just replicate and change easily. And Renee was talking about there's, there's an actual online community of Canva yes. for real estate agents. It's super helpful. Yes. I joined that as soon as you gave me that information. Yeah, so 
they share templates too, which is really nice. So you can download a template and then just make it your own. So um, it's really cool that they let agents do that. So I have a- and where's that? Template. Where's that, Renee? Uh, Canva for real estate agents, Facebook group. Oh, Facebook. Okay. I wasn't sure if, if you had said Facebook or not. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I think you're in that group. I, I borrowed a. Have... <laughs> Go ahead, Laura. Maybe. <laughs> you gave me like 10 groups. <laughs> um, it did, they did the alphabet of real estate. Oh, and so I borrowed that template and I'm doing that in my um, Instagram, but they're not ads. It's more kind of just informational kind of stuff. Yeah. But I haven't done an ad in a while. I haven't done one for a while either. Oh. Ads are much easier when you have a listing. I feel like you just get more out of it. I agree. I agree. So that's why I want to show you guys this. We're, we're doing an ad together right now. Notice how I just, I created this in Canva real quick. What'd it take? Three minutes while you guys were talking? Dan, I really like your attention to detail on that. What do you mean? I would have never thought to overlay another thing just to get that border. Just that little bit <laughs> of a border to, to do that. I wouldn't have done that. I was trying to figure out what you were doing and I was like, oh. It adds, it adds dimension. It does. And that's what you want. You want to add a little bit of dimension, especially as simple as that. I was almost thinking about doing a black border and this right. is what the thought process is because the letters are white with a white border and black with a black border, but nothing else on this page is black. Right. So that's why I went away from the black border. I mean, I could definitely change this to the gray that matches, but then we would know it actually washes out. Design wise, I should pick a darker gray here so I can use a darker gray here. So it almost looked like the missing letters are represented over here. That just creates balance in the photo. But I don't think we're going to have that hyper critical of a shopper. Right. I mean, that's, that's just me going through a couple of design classes for advertising and negative space and understanding how that all works out. But you really, really, I was trying to do something just so I could show you how to do this. So in campaigns, as long as your Facebook's already set up like it should be, creating a new campaign, we're gonna do a social ad. I'm gonna do this as equity, advertise listing, attract listing. So whatever you wanna pick, I like to attract listings. I'm gonna go on Facebook, Instagram, set up campaign. It's gonna instantly pop up this. You'll see the CTA header box, which will tell us where everything goes. So your main copy, up top, headline down here. So we can say, so with the market showing less than one month of inventory available there yeah, what did you post just a few uh, the other day was it renee you said it was 0. 0.8 or something like that 0. 0.8 was the december number yeah When they say like that it's low inventory, it means that there's only less, there's less than a month of houses available. Is that right? Yeah, 24 days. Yeah, <laughs> the, the condition is that at our current rate, if we had no more listings added to the MLS right now, we would run out of inventory in 24 days. Wow. Okay, that's right. that kind of stuff. Because people might not understand what that means, less than one month of inventory. So that's why I'm like, okay, how do I explain that better too? If no more houses were to go on the market, we would be out of houses in 24 days. Yeah. San Francisco's at 10 days right now. 
Jeez. What? Mm. Yeah, I learned that on Clubhouse. <laughs> what about San Diego? I don't know. There was just there was an agent from San Francisco on the in the chat. Yeah. That's crazy. I thought everybody was leaving California. <laughs> Well, San Francisco's in the top five growing cities for next year. I don't know why, but hmm. I think San Diego's seeing more of the leave than San Francisco. Hmm. So, notice how I'm just putting some ad copy, some simple stuff. We're going to go to the ad media. We're going to select media and add an image. We're going to upload the image from my hard drive because that's where I saved it. We're going to preview and crop. It's already wide format. Save image. Did I spell everything right? Yeah. It looks stupid when you don't. Configure. You're going to create the account. Which page it's tied to, it has to be tied to one of your business pages. That's why I say you have to have a business page. So it's going to ask to use a lead generation form or use a site landing page. So I'm actually going to redirect people to my big Dan call kw.com so they can start looking. But I also want them to go away check box so we can go here and learn more it was just a call to action and then put the follow-up. So once they learn, they're gonna click learn more, it's gonna send me their information and it's gonna send them to my website. I can do within 20 miles of Tucson, Arizona. We can do custom settings if you want to. We can target the database. We can target locations in Arizona within 30 miles. We can add interests like people looking for realtor or home, Let's see if it'll pull up anything. So home business, home automation, home repair, small office, just different stuff to help narrow down so you get the most specific shop. Like if you were selling horse property, you could do an ad to horse people. If you're selling you know, RV places, you can do an ad to RV places. You're doing golf property. I did a golf property across the way from me. I did ads to golf people and generated five leads. Five bucks for five leads ain't bad. So this is the thing. And if you want to use it, you don't have to, but you can also do a static post on your social media and just share it. This puts it in front of people you don't know. And then it automatically generates the duration and budget. They always say that a 10 day run is the best at $1.50 per day. Total budget, 30 bucks. So that's me spending $30 on an ad and see if I can't generate some money from it. We'll see how it goes. Right. Big Dan, can how did you not get it to put your logo in twice? So I've done this before and I design stuff and, but then I come here and then I end up with like double KW logos. I have no idea. It's just set up that way. So it's doing the upload your DBA logo. I don't know where, yeah. don't know where it's going to put it, but it's going to put it somewhere. Oh, okay. It probably will put it then. Yeah, it'll put it somewhere. I just don't know where. So. Pretty easy though. And I like using the automatic placements for the ads, because it, what it'll do, it actually uses the algorithm based on your audience and posts it where they think it's gonna get most views. Okay, so I have a question on that. Have yours ever shown any money being spent towards Instagram? Yeah. Because mine are always zero for Instagram. I've even seen my ads on Instagram. People have sent me screenshots of them. Huh. But does do your numbers actually, do they actually show that? Like where once you've done an ad and it's gone through or are they all showing up on your Facebook as like the allocation? Let's go look. I mean, that's, that's literally how simple it is to run an ad from creation to campaign. 
10 minutes. Yeah, right here. So, yeah, that's weird, huh? Mine never shows any money being put towards Instagram. Huh. Okay. I was just curious. And these are, this is what we do things. So I've done a couple ads. You know, command hates me. So it's okay. All right, any questions on that, guys? Uh, it was pretty simple, but I wanted want to give you something you can use. And it doesn't have to be your face, doesn't have to be anything super over the top. But if you can, if you can capture somebody in that moment and you get them to go, wow, that makes sense. Simple is sexy. It really is. And it's not, it's not the function that we're worried about getting in front of people. It's the why, you know, can we tell the story? Like in that photograph, why, why am I getting more from my house? When inventory drops, your equity raises. Is it true? Supply and demand, right? It's a loss of almost everybody. Almost everybody knows the law of supply and demand. Because somebody in their life at some point had said some bullshit like, hmm, that's the law of supply and demand. And they got mad and disgruntled. And they're like, Fuck. but I want you guys to start thinking about what can you post to generate conversations around real estate. Now, I'm not saying that everybody should throw $20 in an ad and just see what it does. Do some research. You may not have 20 bucks. You may need to generate some business before you can even do this, but that's why we have Facebook groups. We have Facebook stories. We have things that compile upon what we did last week. We talked about creating an element around your community. That is who you are. And when you can do that, you can generate leads for free. I got, I got a couple more minutes of your time. I can show you a simple method that do I still have it? I'll put it, I'll put it in the, the group inventory, but I'll, I'll overline it a little bit. We'll cover it more on Thursday. But in group chats and groups, group like large communities and stuff like that, I used to post an ad for my renters to homeowners program. And it would say looking for renters for home, my homeowners program, my free homeowners program. So, I thought no, you look, couldn't do that anymore. Looking for you can't since when? Uh, I I was I was told that mine got one of mine got denied because you can't target a specific population due to fair housing. There's nothing about the rental market that is not fair housing. It's no different than you. I'm just saying that was why one of mine got denied. That's all I'm saying. So what community? <laughs> Who denied it? Either Facebook or Command. I don't know one or the other weird so that's what i did is you, you, people target people on facebook all the time that's the whole reason you have that algorithm that search for interests i so, was told that that was targeting one i don't know like i said I'll i don't even remember I'll confirm, but i'll continue like i said i'll confirm we'll continue the conversation on thursday but what it was is just looking for homeowners uh, renters to homeowners program it just says requirements two years job history doesn't have to be the same job and comment and you know, stop renting, start owning. And I did probably 15 deals last year off of conversations that happened in the last couple of years. Pardon me, Jason's not on our call. Hey, Jason, I'm on the PC call. Yeah, what's your question? So, so the client wants to put an offer on a house they really like, and they know that the roof is bad. Should they put the, should they outline that on the initial offer or wait until the inspection period? The correct answer by law is yes. They need to be putting it on the offer because it's a defect that you can see at the time of offering. However, will that weaken your offer? Absolutely. Communicate that with your buyers and let them know the harm that they're going to put themselves in in the event that the seller cares not to replace, repair, or anything with that roof. 
So Jason says hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. We all wave. All right. Thanks, Jason. Yeah. So that being said, you want to make sure that you communicate. Because if you can see it and you know it's an issue before you ever put an offer in, you need to outline it in the offer or at least have a conversation with the listing agent at a bare minimum. But because they can always come back and say, well, we, we told you in the SPDS right here that the roof was bad. We told you here, you could see the listing, all this stuff, but you never said anything about it. So we're not going to fix it. So I know that it creates an element of, well, you're not going not gonna to win that offer. But what's more important, winning your offer or keeping your career? No paycheck is worth your integrity, period. So awesome, guys. Well, anything else? Any questions, randomness, anything we can do to tie on to this whole conversation? Have you done any deals with Pima County Community Land Trust? I have not. So Angelica and Joseph are interested in one. And I've asked her if she fits in the income requirement because that's the first main big thing. Right. But if they do, like it's like it's a 99 year lease. And so then my next step's gonna be to ask Fairway if they would do such a thing. Otherwise you have to use this one specific bank that they're supplying i hate those programs and it's just uh, bank person okay i was just curious if you'd done anything like that i hadn't okay you to know a fair way to even back something like that because if it's a 99 year lease then yeah. that's not partnership that's leasehold tenant right so Interesting, interesting, interesting. I got to call their sister and see what we can do about that listing. So this was a situation where we found the, the, the buyers we found through a referral on Facebook. And Robin had mentioned something about the sister. They rented the house from the sister and there was a guy that was co constantly bugging them to come over to take pictures the new buyer constantly bugging them to come take pictures. And that struck my mind, that's a wholesaler. Somebody who is so interested in coming in the house just to take pictures because they want to remarket it and resell it. So I was like, hey, Robin, do me a favor, give me the contact information for, this, for the sister. And we did. And I called the sister and had a conversation with her. And just again, finding motivators, finding what the conversation was and earning their trust, found out that the wholesaler was offering them about $75,000 for a house that's worth about 140 dollars in its current condition in this marketplace. So four bedroom, two bath on the south side. It needs an AC and it needs roof, but seriously, come on. But that was an impressive to find that out. We, we're still fighting that wholesaler because they canceled the contract. So if you guys run into yourselves in a client like that, remember you are not real estate professionals when it comes to wholesaling. It's not your wheelhouse and you wanna advise your clients to seek legal um, consult in those and so they understand their options in those situations. So I want to share that out there because it can get very sticky, very ugly, very quickly. I love it how all my girls show up to the calls, but none of the guys. <laughs> That's probably why you make more money than they do. Just saying. <laughs> so, although you guys are going to get out there and beat Jason, he's on his fourth listing already this month. Well, maybe it's his, it's his third, but he had one closing this last week, but he closed his first listing last week. But you got to get out there, door knock and door knock and talk to your community. That's where he's getting these things from. So, and Renee's okay, snuck in the community that she works in a lot. What? It's out in Red Rock. What about me? So you just, yeah, I know you can snuff your nose because you're always out there working it too. That's where Jason does oh. a lot of we have, yeah, we have one closing out there soon. Um, we had been working on that one that Jason had, actually, and then we kind of gave him up to Jason, so. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Yeah, that was Not much. <laughs> and I'm going to say this very frankly and on recording. If you ever need help with a deal, remember, you're in the coaching program. Do not partner with an agent outside of coaching just so they can take a percentage of your pay. Just call me. 
or someone else in the group, we're here to help. You know, some, someone lost half of their listing just by, because someone said, oh, I'll help you with that. No worries. Just put me on your listing. Of course, they'll help you with that because you've already secured the hard part. There's not a situation out there that we can't find the answer to. So here's an interesting little thing that's totally off of that track. Um, I was going in to print out the current buyer advisory, which is November, December, 2020. Mm -hmm. But when, because I hadn't finished it from the other day, I wanted to have a, co a, a copy in front of me. And I went back into the AAR transaction desk forms place where I get the forms. And the only one they have is still the July, 2021. And our Thankfully, broker I had downloaded it. I just forgot which of my two devices I had downloaded it. So I found it. But why did, why did that happen where I can't find the December one now, except for the downloaded one that I have on my machine? Why did it pop back to the July one? I don't know. I wasn't communicated about that. We don't have any control over transaction desk forms. They're updated at the state level. So, um, okay, but if, okay, so like, what if we get gigged for not having the most current one, as long as it's what's in there, it's okay? Essentially, yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, um, I have a comment regarding forms too, Dan. Um, I've noticed that the Keller Williams ABA is updated in dot loop, but not updated in DocuSign. Mm. And the market condition advisory in DocuSign is also a sample document. So, I which have... you know, it's funny though that you say that because it says sample on the little like thumbnail. But when I when I did it this past week, it was fine. Oh no, mine when... was sample. So. You're, yeah, so it, on the on the when I did it this week, it said sample on the like thumbnail, but when I actually did it, sample wasn't on there. Weird. So I don't know, but Doctor Singh still hates me. So <laughs> <laughs> don't even get me started. Our, um, the command and DocuSign just don't like you. No, DocuSign hates me even worse. Trust me. Awesome. Well, we're going to keep that hatred deep, deep inside of you and don't let it out. <laughs> Anything else from the group? Laura, you good? Melissa, you good? Robin Bender, you good? I'm good. All right. I'm getting there. Nicole, get prepped for Thursday. You got this. I'm having a tough time with this, um, these templates to edit them. Am I missing something here in command in the templates, like for the listing presentation? Nope, it's not easy. Okay. <laughs> Cause it's I just get, not like, use, it's just not user friendly. It's, Cause I can't seem to get like the text, the words. I can't type words. I got my picture on the first page. I can't get words. I just downloaded the whole thing into Publisher and I've been doing it in Publisher because I'm familiar with that. I, I couldn't do it in command. Oh. It's a listing presentation? Uh -huh. Or Creative Suite. Let's see if I've got one pulled up. Okay. Well, here's the buyer presentation, but her buyer, yeah, her buyer's one was weird too, though, because I helped her with that one day, and I, I, she was able to edit after we cleared her cookies, though. So I wonder if I don't know. Something is so weird. This should not be this hard. I agree. It's in the templates. Okay, so um, are you on your computer? Like, can you share your screen? Here, look. This is just my template here on the left. You got your templates, your images, your text, right? You want a title? Click and drag a title and then type in it. Hmm. If you don't like it, delete it. 
If you want a body of text, click and drag a body of text. If you want a text block, it's going to give you a text block. I don't see the distance. But how do you get um, it to change? Like it says title, subtitle, body text, text block. How are you getting that? Click and drag it. Notice how you got title. It's, it's hovering over the word home. Oh. It just pops up. And then I double click inside the box. Oh, and then you. And then I just type inside of the box. If I want to change this word to I just click on the box and double click inside of it. PowerPoint or publisher. Right. Okay. Give that a shot. Okay. Okay, thanks. I gotta go. What's that? Okay. Tess? Grandson's at the door. I gotta go. Okay. We're all gonna go. <laughs> All right, bye. Yeah, the system is it's not as user-friendly as Canva because it wasn't designed for the public. It was designed for our system. If you learn how to use it, it's not that difficult. It's just click, drag, double click. Okay. So. And if it starts acting funky, do the like clearing your cookies. Okay, click, cache. drag, double click. Okay. Yeah, definitely clear your cache because they update every okay. Tuesday. They update command. And Thursday. And Thursdays now, cool. And you see something wonky, refresh it, close it out, clear your cache, reopen it, restart. Okay. Yeah, and for, for some reason, her designs wouldn't work in incognito either, which was weird because normally incognito works better for me. That's weird. I don't know. Did it's, you guys use Canva at all to do a listing? They, ha I saw a listing presentation in Canva. You can. No. It, I use mine. Came out of Michael Lewis Marketing Suite. I don't think we got access to that though, did we? No, we, they took it away. Yeah, I think they took that away before I even started. Yeah. So, all right, my friends, go uh, play. He doesn't want to delete. You need to have a listing presentation, okay. a buyer presentation created so that you can just change the name or change the address and then roll with it. They're designed to be simple templates. You change a couple of things and then roll with it. You don't have to re-edit the whole thing, but you have to start with something. So invest the time now to get that done before you get an appointment. Like I love that Nicole's doing it now instead of on Wednesday. So well, every time I've gone to do this, it frustrates me. So then I don't get it done because. Well, what makes you frustrated? Doesn't work. It does work, or you just don't know how to use it. So what's frustrating you? I have stuff to work, I guess. That I don't know how to use it, I guess. So you're frustrating yourself. So remember that when you get frustrated, be like, hey, I'm doing this to myself, breathe, and then text me. Or someone okay. else, guys, I can't figure this fucking thing out. Can you help me? And I guarantee somebody has gone through that same thing. And guess what? Hey. They might have the answer. So when you get frustrated, remind yourself who's frustrating you. Okay. I had the same conversation with a nine-year-old last weekend, okay? <laughs> we don't ever grow out of it. If we're frustrated, we have chosen to be frustrated because there's, there's something simple we're overlooking. And you're frustrated because you believe it should be easier or because you think, you think you're missing something. That's the difference between frustration and anger. Uh -huh. If you said I was mad at it, you, I would say that it was okay. a but. Always know that if someone has done it, and if you had a hiccup on something, there's a resource to help you get through it. So, okay. Thank I you. You'll be able to change all of your words now if you want to. Okay. <laughs> you can draw shapes and all kinds of cool stuff. So, happy Martin Luther King Day, guys. Right. I hope you enjoyed your time. Thank I hope it hasn't been too you. stressful for you today. And um, God help us the next two days. We'll see what happens. All I could ever ask you guys, if you see negativity on social media, ignore it. Move past it. Also, I noticed somebody say something in a group the other day. Now that Zillow is a brokerage, be very careful about bashing them on anything. Yeah, don't bash anybody, period. Yeah. But now that they're a brokerage, you don't address them. All yeah. that jazz.
I can't even use my joke anymore. But the A and Z. No. Yeah. That's considered bashing. Yep. If I can play nice, so can you. Just saying. Yeah, I just saw people like in one of the I don't know which group of us were getting really like act up over it one day. So like I said, if you guys see that negativity and, and, and fear culture and things to spike your energy on social media, stay away from it. So. Have a wonderful afternoon, my friends. I will see you tomorrow morning on the scripts and role play call. Good to have you back. Sounds good.